Well, Chris, for every driver here, of course, the ultimate goal is victory and a little piece of racing immortality. But for one driver of the 19th car, Martin Truex Jr., for the last eight years, he's been driving for something more, for the woman in his life who's in the fight of her life. It's a fight they share to help others. We like to believe fear is a choice. But really, fear is a moment. I mean fear, complete and utter fear. I have my whole life ahead of me. I don't want to leave my family behind. I don't want to leave him behind. There's so many things I want to do. I can't imagine ever waking up one day of my life and thinking, I'm not going to fight this today. Martin Truex Jr. has been a fighter all his career on the racetrack. Martin Truex Jr. dominated this race. That's where he first met Sherry Pollux in 2005, and they've been together ever since. They both worked on Martin's foundation supporting pediatric cancer. But in 2014, Sherry received her own diagnosis, stage three ovarian cancer. Her five-year survival rate estimated at less than 30%. I literally threw myself on the ground that day and said, I want, like, God, why me? I've done everything right in my life. Like, how did this happen to me? It's the hard part about it is, you know, be the greatest person in the world. Um, like her, kids, you know, children. They don't deserve this. And that was the toughest part. As soon as we left there, she's like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not giving up. And uh, she started fighting. The fight and the treatments began. Hours of surgery, 17 months of grueling chemotherapy, losing her taste, her weight, and her hair. How? skinny I was, who I saw in the mirror. Um, the person looking back at me just looked so sick. She looked like she was on her deathbed. You know, it was, it was hard to recognize her. And so that was the lowest point for sure. Through it all, she had one demand of Martin, to keep racing. It made me happy too, to see him compete on Sundays. You know, even though I couldn't be there. I mean, I was still watching from home, you know, and it was, it was good for me. It was good for my soul. There you go. Come on. Clear, clear. You know, it played in my mindset. It played in of, you know, how I approached racing. The never give up attitude, just the fight, the will to win. And I don't have to look far for that example. Sherry made it through her first fight, only to have the cancer return in 2016, the same year she launched Sherry Strong. There's really no advocacy around this disease. I wanted to be that person that could stand up and say, I'm here and I'm fighting it with you. And I don't know how long I'm gonna live, but for the time that I'm here, I'm gonna bring you hope. To see how she's handled this, battle of hers and helped others along the way and done all these things are the reason that she's here with us today. Through the foundation, she opened the Sherry Strong Integrative Ooh. Oncology Clinic in Charlotte. <laughs> all while Martin has kept racing and winning. The best team all year long can now celebrate a championship. And while Sherry has kept going and living and at Bristol last year, shouting. Drivers, start your engines! I just remember after the race, he's like, did you hear me? I'm like, hell yeah, I heard you. The whole world heard you. <laughs> Sherry is now in her third fight. The cancer returned again late last year. I do have some tumors in my right lung. I'm praying for a clean scan here in the next couple months, but I feel good. And I'm gonna be there on Sunday on that. 
starting line right next to him on the grid, and I'm going to be there. I want to see Martin take the green on Sunday, hopefully win his first Daytona 500. There's no other option for me. You can tell me there's tumors in my lungs. You can tell me there's tumors wherever, but I'll never give up. I will fight till the end, till I'm on my deathbed. I just won't stop. Since the cancer returned in December, Sherry has undergone alternative treatments and therapies and says they've been effective so far. In all, she's endured three major surgeries and more than 40 rounds of chemotherapy. All while she's continued to fight, Martin Truex Jr. has had the greatest stretch in his racing career, the two of them supporting each other. And Chris, importantly, sharing this story and the signs of early detection, like loss of appetite and stomach discomfort, so that other women might seek out medical help and learn from her example. A portrait and courage for both. She's here cheering Martin Truex Jr. on, hoping to capture his first Daytona 500. Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.